Hello everyone, my name is Kodamore and welcome to episode 12 of creating a space shooter with Godot. So I tweaked my particle system a little bit so I made the stars a bit smaller. I think it looks a little bit better. And today we're going to start creating a meteor that's basically going to go down the screen very slowly to intimidate the player. And the player can shoot it or it'll hurt the player if it runs into the meteor. So we're going to create a new scene to represent our meteor. So we're going to go ahead and create a new 2D scene and our meteor is going to be an area 2D. So we're going to add an area 2D mode, node, like so, and we'll right click it and select make scene route. Again, we need to be able to detect collisions with our meteor, so we're going to make it an area 2D. And we can delete that node 2D right there. Next, our meteor is going to need a sprite. So I'm going to add a child node to this area 2D, and it's going to be a sprite. And I'm going to drag my meteor big image from my textures folder into the texture for my sprite just like this. Now if you recall, the next thing we have to do is add a collision shape to this area 2D. Now we're actually going to do this differently. What we did before with the player was we added a collision shape 2D node to the area 2D and then we chose a shape like for instance a circle and then we would size it so that it approximately covered the meteor. Now this is great sometimes but look at this. We have all this space that isn't actually meteor, it's just blank image but this circle for my collision area still includes that blank area. And I don't want to make a player lose my game if they hit this collision area and it doesn't even look like they touched the asteroid. That's just unfair. So I'm actually going to delete the collision shape 2D node that I just added. And instead, we're going to add a node to the area 2D and it's going to be a collision polygon 2D. This is very similar, but it gives us way more control. Go ahead and zoom into your asteroid. And when you have your collision polygon 2D selected, you'll see these icons up here at the top of the screen. If you click the first one, labeled Create Points, we can start drawing around our asteroid to define the collision area ourselves. So go ahead and click Create Points up there, and then start clicking one of the corners of your asteroid, and that'll add a point. And you can then just start drawing the area that you want to be collidable for your asteroid. So I'm just going to go along all the edges of my asteroid here, I keep calling it asteroid or meteor, either one works. And then you'll click your starting point to finish it off. And as you can see, that generates a collision shape for us that is exactly the size and the shape of our asteroid. Now, if you don't want to look at these colors all the time, you can just go ahead and take the visibility icon right here next to the collision polygon, and you can just hide it, and it looks a bit neater in the editor. So we now have a perfect collision area that matches the exact shape of our sprite. Next, I'm going to rename my area 2D to Meteor, and I'll go ahead and save this scene. I'm going to create a new folder called Meteor, and I'll save my Meteor scene right inside of there. Okay, great. So now, if we go to our gameplay screen, we should be able to go into our Meteor folder and drag our Meteor.t scene right in here, and we have a Meteor in our game. Now, of course, if we run this, it's not going to do anything. So we have to get it to move down the screen, and it would also be pretty cool if it was kind of slowly rotating, like a meteor might actually do. So we're going to go into the meteor, and we're going to click the root node, the meteor area 2D, and we'll attach a script to it. I'll call it meteor.gd, and I'll delete everything except for extends area 2D. So the first thing we need is some speed that we want the meteor to move at. So I'm actually going to randomly generate the speed. So we want some minimum and some maximum speed that a meteor can travel at. So let's make a few export variables. One's going to be called min speed. It's a float, and we'll just set that equal to 10 for now. And another variable, max speed, it'll also be a float, and we'll set that equal to 20. We'll have to definitely tweak those. That might be a little too slow. And basically, we are going to set the speed of the meteor to be between these two values. So of course, we need to store the speed of this meteor. So we'll have a variable for speed, float, and we'll just set it equal to zero to begin with. And just type zero like that. Next, we're going to create the ready function. This ready function runs whenever an instance of our meteor gets created and added to a tree in our game. So we're able to initialize the meteor here. This ready function runs only once. So what do we want to do? Well we want to initialize the speed. So we're going to say speed equals, and then we want a random value between min speed 
and max speed. So we can use the rand underscore range function, which takes in a minimum and a maximum, and it'll generate a random value between the two. So min speed, max speed. And there we go. We immediately have a random speed assigned to our meteor. Next, we actually have to move our meteor down the screen. So we're going to do that in our physics process function, again, because it's part of movement. So we'll take the y position of our meteor, position.y, and to go down, we have to increase the y values. So we're going to add our speed times delta. There we go. So let's test this out currently. I'm going to click on my meteor here, and we can change the speed of the meteor, I think probably 50 minimum and maybe maybe 80 maximum speed might be good. We'll test it out. And we go to our gameplay. We already have a meteor in our scene here. So if we start the game, hopefully it starts moving downward for us, which it does. So it generated a random speed between those values, and it's now moving downward. Now let's add some rotation to it, some random amount of rotation. So we're going to create another variable in the meteor script. It's going to be rotation rate. It's going to be a float, and we'll set it equal to zero to begin with. Now we also want to randomly generate this as well. So let's create a few variables. Export var min rotation rate. And we'll set that equal to uh, negative 10 degrees per second. Let's just try that. And then we'll have a max rotation rate, which is going to be positive 10 degrees per second. So either rotating to the left or rotating to the right. Now in our ready function, we'll randomly generate our rotation rate the same way. So rotation rate equals rand range, our min rotation rate, and our max rotation rate, just like that. And now we actually have to rotate the object by this amount. So before I move my meteor, I'm going to go ahead and I'll set the meteor's rotation underscore degrees, and we'll just add on our rotation rate times delta. Now you'll notice that there were two properties. There's a property called rotation and a property called rotation degrees. These are the exact same thing, but they're in different units. Rotation degrees is in normal degrees, as you know, angles are. So from 0 to 360 degrees. Now, rotation represents the same thing, but it is in radians. Radians is basically another way to measure angles based on pi, where it's from 0 to 2 pi instead of 0 to 360 degrees. I'm not here to explain radians. So we can just go ahead and add to our rotation degrees the rotation rate that we want per second. And if we run the game, we should get a random rotation rate, and our meteor is slowly spinning around. That's a little too slow, and it's possible that it just generated a value close to 0, because we're generating a value between negative 10 and 10. But I'll just change that between negative 20 and 20. And maybe we'll see a faster moving one. It's slightly faster, so you can see our rotation of the meteor. Now we're missing one key thing. If we go to our gameplay scene with our game running, we saw that our meteor just left the screen, but our remote scene view shows that the meteor is still there. So just like with the bullet, when the meteor leaves the screen, we have to make sure that we delete it properly, or else we're going to have a buildup of meteors in our game, and that's a performance issue. So we'll go into this meteor that we have nicely moving and rotating, and we will add a visibility notifier 2D, just like the bullet. And you're going to go ahead and take this shape for the visibility notifier, and we can simply make it cover the entire meteor. It doesn't have to be perfect, because no one's going to see this, it's not for collision. It's just to let us know when this area leaves the screen. Then we'll click on the Node tab, and click the Screen Exited signal for the visibility notifier. We'll double click it, and we're going to add a listener to our meteor node with the script attached. So we'll click Connect, and here we have this function that has been generated. So whenever this meteor leaves the screen, we have to call QFree, which will remove it from the tree and free or delete this node at the end of the current frame. So now if we run the game and we take a look at our remote tab in gameplay, we see the meteor, and then once the meteor completely goes off the screen, it should disappear from our remote view there. And there we go, it disappeared. So, that's perfect. We have our Meteor Basics started. It's moving and it's going. Now, the next thing is we have to be able to shoot this Meteor or it's useless. Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you in the next episode.